Welcome to day two of the 30th National Oil and Acrylic Painters Society Best of America National Juried Exhibition. Today we will join Matthew Cutter, co-owner of Cutter and Cutter Fine Art Gallery and host of our exhibition. In addition to owning a prestigious fine art gallery, Matt is also a well-known, award-winning artist. Working in both oil and acrylic, Matt has won numerous awards including Best of Show at the NOAP's 2019 Best of America Exhibition, Honorable Mention at the Oil Painters of America 2019 Online Showcase, Best Building in the October and November 2019 Plein Air Salon Competition, Best Use of Light and Color in the 2018 National Oil and Acrylic Painters Society Best of America Exhibit, Honorable Mention in the 2018 OPA Spring Exhibition, and also has won numerous awards with Bold Brush. Today, Matt will share his techniques with painting in acrylic, highlighting his use of light and color. Here's Matt. Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Matt Cutter. I'm an artist and painter. I've been asked to do a demonstration for the NOAPS, National Oil and Acrylic Painter Society, for an upcoming show. And I've been asked to do a demonstration in acrylic, and I would like to start off by talking a little bit about the medium of acrylic itself. I think it has a lot of advantages and disadvantages. And the first one is both an advantage and a disadvantage, and that is that acrylic dries really fast. So it's great from the standpoint that you can build up multiple layers um, on the painting surface. They dry really quickly, but also that can be a disadvantage because it dries really quickly. So the traditional way that you would maybe get soft edges with an oil painting, you might not be able to achieve those in the same fashion. Uh, one of the other advantages is that you, in oil, have to do fat over lean, but with acrylic, you can do a light wash right over the top of a textured type of, uh, of a brush stroke, and that's a great advantage. So those are some of the things that I hope to demonstrate with, um, with this painting this afternoon. And uh, without further ado, let me, let me introduce you to what I have going on in my palette here. So it's a fairly basic palette. It's a stay wet palette. I have a wet piece of paper down on the palette. You can put a sponge underneath, but that's not something that I always do. For this particular one, I've got the sponge out. I think it, it makes the paint a little bit too wet, not, not as much texture as I like sometimes. So I'll just be cognizant. Um, I'm in the studio, it's not gonna dry overly fast on me and I have a spray bottle and I'll just probably squirt the paints as I, as I think I need to. But the basic palette starts with titanium white, cadmium yellow light, yellow ochre, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, viridian, sap green, burnt umber, Payne's Gray, and a permanent violet. Uh, and also over here I have Titan Buff, which is like a nice warm, uh, like a warm white, I would call it. And as far as mediums today, probably in the final stages, I'm gonna use this golden high solid gel mat. Most of the paints are golden, Windsor Newton, and it might be one or two Liquitex ones in there, so. And then in terms of surface, I have uh, a stretched linen canvas that I've applied two coats of golden acrylic gesso to. Uh, there's a lot of different surfaces I like to paint on when it comes to acrylic painting. Uh, this is one I think is really nice and I like the way it takes the paint. So a couple couple coats of the gesso on there and, that, and you're really good to go. As far as brushes, I really have a, I have a hodgepodge of, of tools and brushes. I have this little rubber chisel that I like palette knife. I have a, a sash brush, which will be one of the first brushes I probably use to lay something, lay the color down in. I've got these sort of chip style brushes. Then I've got a couple brushes for finer, finer marks here. Nothing super special. I don't think it requires super special brushes. Uh, I will say these some of these small ones for the final strokes and maybe more detailed strokes, it is nice to have something that'll hold a good edge. But other than that, I mean, I feel like you can use a lot of different tools and implements to create the marks and the, 
and the, uh, the desired textures you want on the surface. Of course, I have a wash bucket for water, and periodically there might be some times where I stop the video just to hit the painting with a hair dryer, and that way I can move the process forward a little, a little sooner. So that's the basic introduction, the, uh, the coverage of materials. What I'm going to be painting today is a fall scene. I was recently in northern Kentucky and had an opportunity to see uh, a beautiful fall uh, colors. I mean, it was just magnificent. So what I'm going to try to do today is give you my best, uh, my best interpretation of what that was. And we'll build the painting uh, from the first strokes to the final ones. And we'll take it from there. All right, let's get started. <laughs> All right, we're ready to begin. Um, just a few more quick words. I've got a 12 by 12 um, linen canvas here, and I love working on a square format, but I do think when you're painting the landscape, that's gonna force you to make some definite changes. Um, usually, you know, you'll see landscapes, they'll be on the horizontal or vertical, something that will exaggerate, uh, exaggerate the proportions when it's a square, it's going to really be incumbent upon the artist to, to really compose and move the eye because everything is so uniform. You've got four uniform edges. So uh, with this one, I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to have some trees that elongate uh, all the way through the picture plane. And so the composition will, will have a dominance of some tree groupings here met with a horizon line coming across. And to start off with that, we're going to just basically get a wash on the canvas. And I wanna lay down the basic patterns of what's going on. So let me start with a little yellow ochre, a little cad red, a little Titan buff, a little bit of water. This is going to be just some of the forest floor, some of the color that's down. None of this stuff is really going to be final marks of anything. I think at this stage it's always important to just think about big picture, not thinking too much about any details. The details come later. It's just setting up a tone, I'm trying to create a blueprint of where I want to go. Just using a little bit of this uh, color, just wiping it around, just setting up a background. And this. You can obviously you can do the same thing with oil. I think in acrylic it's it's also effective. You just can't work back into it as much, but so that's just a basic it's a basic layer there. Color mixtures, they become very instinctive. I, it's hard to know sometimes what you're grabbing. It's more thinking about warming and cooling things than specific color. So I want a nice dominant tree coming right down here.
the stage is just, just building. I do have a reference photo off of uh, camera here, and I also have uh, another painting study that I did. So I'm using those as my two forms of reference, and I'm just working through this composition. When you're doing these forest pieces, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of information to choose from. What you want to try to do is pick out the most important information, pick out the trees that are going to create a dominant pattern. I'm going to have some of this ground cover. There's these small little sapling trees that um, the color had turned a bright yellow, and that's, that's really created like a blanket of color on the forest floor. So it'll have a, a very yellow-orange harmony um, in some of the mixtures. I'll have the complementary of some violets and purples to try to, try to pick up on... Um, some of that rhythm that, that seems to be out there in nature. And all right, at this point, not every tree has to be popped in, but I'm trying to find some dominant shapes. Alright, so that's just the basic, basic rhythm of the composition there.
keep some edges soft and just start plotting some points in order to continue to build compositional elements. Go back into that forest floor a little bit. Start to darken the value and just start to add some different colors and nuance. That's one of the advantages of acrylic is I can go and go right through the drawing. I'm going to come back over the the layering capabilities is certainly one of the attractions. Put out a little bit of this high solid gel mat. Start working some of these trees and start building up the textures and the values in them. And I'll probably be using a lot of that in the mixture.
this is a slow process in some ways, but in many others, it's, it's really not. Everything is more or less composed. A basic color harmony has been laid down. And now it's just a question of starting to build up the layers and starting to commit to more of these final strokes, the strokes that'll hopefully, you know, build this painting and carry it, carry it forward. This one right behind the other. All right, so I've got a lot more of the layers built up. I've got a lot of work in on the trees now. I've done a little bit more on the ground plane and starting to just build up some layers and textures. So I'll just continue to keep working and keep demonstrating a little bit more of, uh, of what I'm doing here. A lot of the stuff with the acrylic is some paint goes down and then more paint goes over it. And so it's just a continued back and forth process, just slowly building, just trying to build up some of the, the things you see in nature, just some, some patterns of dark and light without painting every leaf on the ground, just starting to pop this color in. Just constant small refinements will be made all the way through the piece.
still mixing in a lot of the, uh, the medium that I put out. Starting to put a couple darks in just to indicate these little marks. It'll be little darks that your eye will find. Certainly we'll be going through to clean some of that up. So I think a lot of the <clears throat> a lot of the things that happen with acrylic, a lot of the reasons people don't like using them, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but some don't like. There's a learning curve with any medium that you do, and certainly there's a learning curve with acrylics. And I think a lot of it is trying to unwind. If you started in oil, it might be trying to unwind what you already had learned traditionally working from thin to thick from dark to light some of those rules get get to go out the door with acrylic so sometimes the normal working patterns might feel foreign with this new medium in your hand so I think a lot of it is just experimentation I know I tried them and left them and tried and left and came back and so much of it is just uh, being willing to fail at it just keep experimenting like with anything really it's just if you practice long enough you're gonna you're gonna find out some solutions that are gonna work
One of the other characteristics of acrylic is it does dry darker in value than what you put down. So sometimes you have to be ready to adjust for that. You think you've got the value nailed and then you go back and it looks way darker than you thought. And that's, that's just another, that's another property of, of the acrylic. So when you figure that out, it just, it's just something you plan for and adjust into. Just add in some sort of violet colors here to push, push the forest back a little bit. Create a little bit of distance. So a lot of this part, it's the same with any type of painting. It's just the, the patience to just start putting the layers on, starting to push and pull, find a couple areas. So these little parts where the tree meets the ground, these are really important parts in a painting. You don't want them to look like they just grow and just exist out. They, the ground grows up around them and the way it has to be painted, it has to be sensitive to that. You have to notice the ground cover will make its way up the tree and you just don't want it to just be a super dark, just hard line there. It doesn't look natural. Nature doesn't do that. 
So the trunks can get, they will get darker, they absorb more moisture, but the way they transition in from the trunk to the ground plane is also, it's not abrupt. So when you're doing these types of pieces, just pay attention to that and that can help to add to that convincing effect if that's what you're going for. So these little marks now, this is the kind of part where the acrylic starts to become the benefit. I can go right over other areas and it starts creating a lot of detail without a lot of effort, really. Starting to resemble uh, the bark of the tree. So I think since we're trying to keep our keep the demo to about an hour or so, I'll probably stop here. I'm going to continue to work it a little bit, and then we'll come back and reconvene. All right, see you shortly. So we're just kind of jumping back in here. So I've worked uh, another good layer of paint on the surface and pretty much getting close to the end here. So I'll probably work for another 15 or 20 minutes and hopefully I'll have it pretty close to completion. So here we go. So at this stage now, I'm starting to refine a lot of the different shapes, starting to put in some details that the eye will find. There's a nice little, um, like a, a ground tree, a little sapling with some leaves changing and it's a little more saturated than the ones in the distance. So I'm just starting to lay in some of that color right now and just see if we can kind of create, there's a little bit of this movement going this way to the composition. definitely have a nice buildup of paint at this point. It's starting to uh, to really develop some, some nice layers. Because I have that build up now, I'm able to just almost let the brush scumble across the surface. surface. I don't know if you can zoom in and see, but the surface has you know, a lot of texture. And so now, as the brush makes its way across, it kind of resembles all the different things going on on the ground. Just putting some indications of different colors and breaking up the shape.
And some of these marks here are nice because it starts to show that the stuff is growing up into the trees. It's not just like grass growing on the ground. It's got some height to it. So letting it come in and across the, the trees and the surfaces shows that the forest floor has some, some depth. Got some really light kind of crunchy leaves that are down so just kind of warm that up again I'm not really painting leaves although that's what they are I'm just putting marks down and I will do the rest we'll take care of blending that all together I like to vary it so Change the temperature and the pigment of all these different marks. This is a nice part of acrylic where I can just start to find a few little accents of dark, pop them in. I could extend this tree line forward just a little bit, just like that. Just some random limbs there. A lot of times it's nice to just drag the brush across and not be too, too much drawn with it. Sometimes the randomness of the mark can look almost a little more natural, especially on the ones in the distance. If you're trying to define something in the foreground that has more attention, you definitely want to pay closer attention to it. But for stuff in this background like this, I'm just trying to capture a little of that, those marks that are in the trees in the distance there. And one way you can lighten the value sometimes is just take a paper towel and just tap it right on in there. If the mark was too dark, paper towel will just lighten it up, just take off a little bit of the paint without taking all of it off. Another thing here is the tops of these trees are getting darker.
That's what you want to keep squinting down, just like if you were outside with your subject. You just want to see the hole. What I want to do is put a little wash, a little bit of like a violet wash in the distance here. It's kind of pink there. Just a little atmosphere help some of these things get back. A couple more darks at the base. So it's getting down to the end here and start to really assess what is necessary. Whoops, that's a little bit lighter. golden band on just a just a hair. Got a few little sky marks here. I might have blocked everything in.
Sometimes a little light finger touch can be a nice way to just lift up a little bit of paint. sky holes and just a touch. I want to keep that portion of the canopy somewhat covered but This is one of those examples where I'm just almost glazing this darker color just into the tree line at the base here. Going right over. Just cut this one tree out a little bit. Not quite light enough. Paint's definitely getting sticky, so it does get a little bit difficult to work at this point, but it's also nice that it, it's much thicker than when we started. tree so I'm just trying to bring that little section out a bit more
little glaze up in the top of this tree too. forward inch more. Well, the truth is, sometimes I feel that I could keep going forever, but I think that's a good stopping point. I think I definitely got it to um, a spot where it feels like when I was standing there in the woods and enjoying nature and seeing all the different colors. So I think I've got a good stopping point here. I hope, uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the demonstration. I'd like to, again, say thank you to No Apps and everyone involved there. Um, they do a fantastic job with the organization. And although we weren't able to have an in-gallery show this year, we've tried to do some of the same events that we would have done had you been in the gallery. And so, hence the, uh, the YouTube presentation that'll, that this will be posted to. So I hope you all enjoyed it and I appreciate your time and thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.